It'll be hard to forget the inshore fishery of 1985. It was the kind of fishery that puts you in mind of that old song, Hard, Hard Times. Take these gill netters, for example. They've been at it for three months. They started in May, down off Cow Head at the foot of the Great Northern Peninsula. Now it's mid-July, and they've worked their way north to the grounds off Cook's Harbor, at the very top of the peninsula. Everywhere they've gone, it's been the same. No fish. The news is spreading like a cold chill all over the northeast coast. The inshore fishery is heading for an almost total failure. The longliner Fortune Cape was looking for a change of luck here off Cook's Harbor. It's their home port. They know these grounds. Cowhead and Port of Schwab might have failed, but this, this is home turf for Herb Carroll and his crew. But if this was meant to be a homecoming, someone forgot to tell the fish. What do most of the fellows think is the cause for this now, the failure the last two or three years? Anybody got any ideas? No, I don't think. I know what's gone wrong. No one got no ideas, I don't think. It seemed like the fish that's left is only the small fish. The fish were getting near this morning, I mean, that's a small round fish with the only fish. In Port of Swallow Spring, was the same thing, it's the smallest kind of fish. It don't seem like there's any big fish left, or... I don't know where it's overfished or it's a job to say, I suppose. Well, the last three years, there haven't been no fish. The year before last, we got a bit in good in Port of Swallow area, it's done good in Port of Swallow. Then we come to Cook's Harbor, we made a failure in Cook's Harbor. And then the Labrador Coast failed too, the last couple of years. Last year in Cook's Harbor area, I suppose some of the boats might have got 100,000. And there's never been in Port of Swallow area. Now we're down in this area again the year. Port of Swallow was a failure again the year. It seemed like Cooks was gonna fail, so. It's only the Labrador Coast to look after now, I don't know. For the past couple of years, I don't think it's gonna be much good this year. Now this is the middle of July. Is this normally your best time? Is this the peak of the season around Cooks Harbor? This is the peak of the season. This is the peak of the season. After another couple of weeks, after August comes in, we're Cooks Harbor is out. We should have had our half our voyage ashore now, we won't get any cooks out of Cape Norman, a stony finger pointing northward to Labrador. This is where the Labrador current funnels into the Strait of Belle Isle. This is the spot for fish. Just a gunshot from Cape Norman is the community of Cooks Harbor. This small settlement, perched between the northern barrens and the sea, is one of the most productive fishing ports for its size on the Great Northern Peninsula. In midsummer, at the height of the northern fishery, it's not unusual to see up to 40 longliners and draggers crowded around the town's single wharf. Cook's Harbor also boasts a small fish plant. It's owned and operated by Fishery Products International. It's a feeder for FBI's big plant in St. Anthony. Even with this plant running full time, they can't fill it all the fish brought into Cook's Harbor. A lot of it has to be sent on to St. Anthony for processing. When you add on the nine trap crews to the rest of the Cooks Harbor fleet, you can see why this small town has a big name in the northern fishery. When you look at some of the According to Jim Larkin of the Fishermen's Committee, Cooks Harbor does fairly well even when local fishermen have poor years. Well, last summer they had a fairly short season. The, uh, it was a million, million pound of fillets taken out of here and uh, they truck it 
to St Anthony, Fishery Products International at St Anthony. And it was something like a four million pound round face truck out to St Anthony. And that was in the poor summer? And that was, last summer was, the only fishery was here was the, the otter trawl fishery. It was no inshore fishery at all last summer. It was a complete failure. And still in all, this, this place here produced uh, five million pounds of fish? Yeah, it seems to be one of the busy communities from uh, between Port of Swan and St. Anthony. It's beginning to get the biggest fishing community along the coast and the busiest. We have a pretty self-reliant community here. We have a feeder plant here, they call it, and uh, owned by, operated by Fish Prize International. They employ about uh, 55 people. And uh, so our community got our own employment here. And it's a big fishing community, so we have a few things to be proud of. When you're, you're mentioned up there with big centers like, like Port of Schwa and places like that, I guess you can puff your chest up a, a bit. Oh, yes, it make you feel proud. It make you feel as if they're, uh, they're interested. Fish comes there and uh, we're proud of our community now, but if we can get it so that you get 100 people in play, it would be much better for the community. Facilities is a big problem. That's about our biggest problem right now. We got no space, no docking space. Be a lot more employment if you had uh, the facilities that we like to have here, because we have boats comes in and they can't get unloaded. So if they got to move somewhere else to get unloaded, that's taking labor out of your out of your community. Yeah? So if the facilities were there, they wouldn't. You know that plant could employ another plus 30 people if the facilities were there to operate. Each evening, as the boats unloaded at the wharf, the problem Jim talked about was obvious. Not only were there Cook's Harbor boats, there were boats from other ports on the northern peninsula and from the Labrador side of the Straits. With only two fish hoists and one wharf, it was one big floating traffic jam. see for yourselves now, you fellas can see and see what kind of problem we got, because there's a, a, you take these little small boats, they're tied up, and, and five or six big draggers tied on, when the wind comes, well, the, the small boats are torn too, you see. Every year right here in Cook's Harbor's increasing and increasing, and now a lot of boats got scallop license, and well, there's more gathering every day. And as you say, with all these, uh, with all these boats tied up, one under the other, under the other, in a line like that, and any kind of a breeze of wind or rough seas, you can have problems. Oh, yes, you take now, you had, it's blind by the night, there's three boats now inside all day draggers, those the only others, and no one aboard of them. And if it's time comes night, uh, they, they, well, they could go on. So you'd like uh, at least another wharf this size? To... Well, I'd like to see another wharf. We got another stage there, and I'd like to see another wharf go off from me and turn and come up, and well, it'd be good for everyone, and it'd be good for community would be good for the people what's coming here. Now Max Decker, whom you just met, is a bit of a legend on this coast. He's been a fisherman for more than 40 years, the last 20 in his longliner, the Wanda Cora. If there's fish around, Max would be the one to find it. So the next day, we took a spin out to where Max was hauling his nets, just outside the entrance to Cook's Harbor. When we first went aboard, Max didn't appear to be doing that badly. You seem to be doing okay here today. Not too bad. No, well, a, we got it. We, we done all right there for for that for one well one good string. But but the way it is, if you know you can't get it at all your all your strings, well, you, 
It was all like that one, now. You, you made a good day. How many fish did you get in that, uh, that string? Oh, we had 100, 290 in that string. That's 290 fish? Yeah. Out of uh, how many nets? Ten nets. So you consider that pretty good, do you? Well, yeah, that's good. If, uh, you'll, get, you'll get 290 fish out of ten nets. That's good. What's the average been now out of most of your fleets, out of ten nets? <laughs> well, the rest of them, was, uh, well, them down to low was 13 fish we had. What's the running fish like? They don't seem to be that big, do they? No, no, there's, there's real, real small fish, real small fish. Well, the small fish here out all the year, don't seem like the meat is any. Well, there's no body to it. Well, there's no, there's no fish right, right through the streets, and there's no body, no cape, and I don't call it. Well, having no cape, a little bunch. And when the cape was struck, we were to carry hid there, and the smallest kind of cape one. And I seen it like one here before, a small cape one come, and just no body of cape to it. And I think wherever the cape was still, the fish is still. You gonna hang on here? No, why? Well, to keep the gear board yesterday and I uh, for the, to go to Labrador. Perhaps could go, perhaps Monday coming. So whereabouts will you go up there? Oh, I dare see I go down uh, around uh, Black Tickle for, for a trip, see what's down to go, and then uh, I'll be going. Most places now, the fish is just smoky. Before the fish disappeared like they have, I mean, how, how would you do on a day like this, this, this time of the year, middle of July, when the fish were around? Well, we should be getting. Well, seven and eight thousand. What, you, what have you been getting? Well, the year well, since I come home, we're averaging, well, I say not much more than 20, but 2,500 right on the run. That's what I've been averaging since I come home. Stop. 2,500, what have not? But 2,500, and uh, well, you must for to make a go from from eight to 10,000 this time of the year. 2,500, not, not much to it. We'd been told the ones hardest hit by the inshore failure were the Cooks Harbor trap fishermen. We found one of the crews hauling a trap just outside the harbor. I recognized Headley Field. I'd met Headley two years ago on the Labrador coast. He'd gone north then because fish was so scarce in Cooks Harbor. I could see things hadn't improved. All that was in this trap were a few mackerel and five or six hundred pounds of very small cod. Headley, last time we ran into you, you're up in uh, Battle Labrador. That's right. That's right. I think the reason you're up to that time is because the fish were too scarce down here in Cooks Harbor. That's right, yeah. Same every year now, what? Every year is about the same thing. Five or six days, very good fish, and that's it. I understand the fish were running a bit last week. Pretty good, yeah. How'd you do? We got about uh, 45,000, of course. 45. A very good week, but uh, nothing for four traps. 45,000 on the four traps? Yeah. And how many days fishing? Oh, about five days fishing. Well, that's, yeah. that's not too many fish, is it? No. Figure out how to go back to Labrador again this summer? Oh, I guess so. <laughs> Probably the end of the month. <laughs> well, I think the problem is down here. Uh, ah, fish is being caught up, I guess. So many boats, draggers, long liners and for a small area. This year seems it seems to be even worse. Trappers did get a little bit, and uh, it don't seem like the, the, the draggers find any fish in the straits down in this area. Nidder's the same thing. Four or five years ago, it would be a, a good summer home for you. Well, we, uh, we would probably get a 50,000 man anyway, roughly. 40 to 50,000. That, that was a good year. First of now. Oh, yes. This seems to be awfully small, too. Oh, all the fish is just smaller every year. I think that's all that's left. Small stuff. That's a problem do do getting some of that stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's the price. You only get, for that small fish, 16 to 18, you'll get about 10 cents a pound. 
worth this lower than uh, three years ago we're getting now, the prep fish. Yeah. On average. It. It's pretty slack. Pretty slack, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Is it likely now? I mean, they said there were fish brown last week. It could be back tomorrow, next day, for another few days? Uh, the way things are looking now, it don't look very bright. It don't look very bright. Because it seems like there's only a small, school, a small bunches of fish, eh? Just striking in. It goes on, and then when you catch out of it, there's nothing left anyway. Okay. Labrador's your only hope. Yeah, right now it is, yeah. And is there? Oh, yeah. It's pretty dry there now, but. You heard Headley mention that there were too many boats around. Well, standing on a hill above Cook's Harbor, I saw what he meant. I could count a dozen draggers strung out along the horizon, and there were dozens more not visible to the naked eye. Yesterday, there had been only a handful of draggers off Cook's Harbor, but all that changed when one boat hit on a spot of fish. The boat was the Northern Dever, owned by Max Decker's son, Barry. Like the other draggers, Barry had been having a tough time finding fish in the straits, until yesterday. You got quite a bit of fish yesterday, I understand? Yeah, we picked up a few yesterday, done good. Not very often we do is that, but we done good yesterday. How much did you get? Well, 25,000, I guess. I haven't got the receipt for it yet, but around 25, I guess. And how many boats were here yesterday when you got to 25? Oh, there was about five boats here yesterday. How many boats are here today when word got around? Oh, about 50 or 60, I guess. Where are they from? Uh, right from New Fro now, down to Flowers Cove, Anchor Point, Sandy Cove, now right to Cooks Harbor. That's where the boats are from. So boats from across the straits, I imagine? Too. Oh, yeah, all around Lancelot and these places, up on the Labrador side there. So a fish that scarce that the boats will come that far since they hear there's a bit of fish around? Well, boy, the way they've been going, didn't you know, don't get either one. Because the boats is all over the place and tight and follows this morning. Go out daylight and come back dark for 1,000, 1,500 pounds, but it seems like now the fish are picking up for something. Uh, we've been holding out for three weeks, and yesterday you know, was the first cape and we got in our net. And it seems like you know, it's getting a bit better. All the boats around our day is picking up a few. It seems like the fish is all over the ground. When you see so many boats like this around, I mean, surely you're going to clean up whatever fish is here in an awful hurry. Well, you know, I'll clean it up, drive a bit, but flash and now there's a good many boats around, and when the body of fish got around, was you know, all the boats done good. You know, after the body of fish gets around, well, you know, you don't drive it so much. Most of the draggers were coming off a very successful winter fishery in Porta Basque. They were up in the straits trying to finish off their boat quotas. So you're content now with to uh, pick up 10, 15,000 a day? Is that what you're getting now? Well, you get 15,000 a day. Well, you know, you got no problem. Uh, 15,000 is a half decent day. We've got nowhere to steam, not there at the Cooks Harbor. It's only 10, 15 minutes here on the ground fishing. But like some places now, you got two and three hours. Well, press five hours sometimes. Well, you've got, you've got to bring back more than 15,000 for the pay for your trip. But here at the Cooks Harbor now, it's only a 15 minute run, and you're back in again. Look at the same kind of marks you get down the Port of Bass area. Oh no, a lot of difference in the marks this way. I hope we're getting to Port of Bass, one or nine. What do you get from here, just to? Just a scatter scratch on the bottom, but sometimes you get some very good marks here. We even got just a good of tolls off Cooks area when we got around Port of Bass. You know, you don't see the fish so, so deep as what it is around Port of Bass, but we've got some good tolls. You did pretty well down Port of Bass, come in. Oh yeah, we done good down there last winter. We had around 400,000 in seven days. Trap boats and the uh, gilliners don't seem to be doing too well, but uh, you seem to be scraping along, right? Well, uh, you know, we thought we'd be doing pretty good this way. But the trap boats and gunning boats now is pretty scarce. Here for a couple of days now, some of the trap crew are getting a bit of fish, but 
overall no, it's pretty bad for them guys. Been bad all year and bad all last year. They don't seem too great. You can't help thinking, you know, that those fellas are getting precious little of anything and they're gilling us in their traps and uh, they see these draggers coming in with you know, upwards 20, 25,000 pounds and must break their hearts. Well, we have cooks out during the summer, but you know, they don't seem like a fishing port until you see the, the travers coming in and flat on the water. You know, when they're coming in, you know, it's, when the travers getting a bit of fish and they're flat down, well, you know, there's a bit of fish around, but when those guys are not getting nothing now, you know, they don't look too good. Like we fellas now, we can go out around offshore, you know, we're out, we can wait there 12, 15 off home, and, you know, we see a bit, we can get a bit, but these fellas in there now, they only got the one spot, and Fish don't go in there while they sit, you know, they don't, they don't get anything. While the draggers sympathize with the trap fishermen, they also know they are seen as part of the problem. You heard Barry say he caught 400,000 pounds of cod in just seven days off Port of Basque last winter. When the trap crews hear numbers like that, they have no problem linking it to the failure of their fishery. Here are the views of just one Cooks Harbor trap fisherman. By the past four or five years, we've seen me going downhill. I don't know the winter fishery on the Port of Bass, all you got to fix to it. It's the season, they call it in the winter. Seems to be ruining our fishery down this way. That fish got to work its way down to the straits, and there's only a few boats getting it. Science says there's plenty of fish. They're not showing up into the land. It was only just a week there. The early part of the week, there was a couple of dragons out here wouldn't get in anything. It was yesterday, now they went out and they had a very good all. Today, now I see there's 50 of them out there just for that little wad of fish we call it, wad of fish. If that's all the fish is out there, the little wads of that, and all the boats got to get into it, I said, there ain't much fish in the Gulf. I still like to see the winter fishery on, on, the, on the Port of Bass side. So close for two or three years for to make, make a difference. If we don't, all the boats is going to be tied up, including the draggers. Well, of course, I suppose you don't really begrudge those fellows. They're only make, trying to make a living like yourself. That's true, sir. I like to see everybody get a bit of fish. But I don't agree with one fleet of boats getting it all, we say. You want a fair crack at it yourself? That's true. We want a fair crack at it. But the past four years, it's downhill. Last year, as a matter of fact, we've all trapped for three weeks coughed up 4,000 pounds. It's ridiculous. I don't know myself what's going to become of it. I said, yet, if it don't be slowed down up there in the winter when the fish is spawning, someone's going to know it. So the frustration showed. Fishermen, staring disaster straight in the face, had to find someone or something to blame. But there's a brighter side to what was at the time a grim situation. Although the trap fishery failed, the small boats didn't do too badly when they switched over to trawls. And the fish picked up in gill nets for a couple of weeks in August. And the boats that went to Labrador did fairly well too. and the draggers managed to scrape up enough to get their quotas. So, Cook's Harbor managed to salvage something out of the disappointment that was the 1985 fishery. Just enough to kindle hopes that next year will be the year things turn around. <laughs>